good afternoon, everybody. I'm just um, going to wait to see how many extra people are going to come in before we kick things off. Um, but welcome to another one of our um, Sri Lanka with Sanka webinar series. And today we're joined by the wonderful Eleanor Milner from the Sri Lanka collection. Um, so we're going to hear about um, all the beautiful hotels in the Sri Lanka collection. Um, I think the idea is that we won't go through any of the teardrop properties, which are also part of the collection, um, because we had a webinar a few weeks ago um, covering the teardrop properties. But we do have a YouTube recording of that one. So um, if you did want to hear about those particular ones, you can always head to our channel um, and check out that recording that we have on there. Um, as usual, please do uh, write questions throughout and we'll do a little Q&A session at the end. If you're having any troubles hearing or seeing anything, just let me know as well. Um, and I'll hand over to Sanka now to kick things off um, with today's webinar. Thanks, Liv. Welcome, everyone, and uh, thank you for your time. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, jump in and see what's uh, the, in the menu for today. So um, during the last session, we focused on uh, Colombo and then the Hill Country. So we'll be focusing a little bit of a different uh, kind of a topic uh, with uh, this webinar. So here we'll be talking about uh, the culture of Sri Lanka, the IRA, the meditation and yoga aspects of the country, then off the beaten path, the wildlife. So we'll be talking a little bit about wildlife as well and how uh, wildlife is not just about going and seeing a leopard, and then how the off the beaten path, uh, you know, like national parks are the way to go. And then of course, we'll be talking about family and honeymoon uh, journeys and beach vacations. So yes, let's uh, start. And I will hand over to Eleanor to uh, let us know about the Sri Lanka collection. Thank you very much, Sanka. Um, so hello to those of you that I've not met before. Um, so my name is Eleanor and I was lucky enough to live in Sri Lanka in 2013 and 2014. And then after living in Sri Lanka and working for DMC, I set up the Sri Lanka collection. And the Sri Lanka collection represents 18 of the country's top boutique hotels. But what's important to note is they're owned and managed by different people and small groups. So this map is a stylized map, which just shows you which of the hotels in Sri Lanka I represent. And then, well, it slightly indicates who owns them, but um, we can discuss that more. But anyway, so yeah, they are owned by different people and small groups as well. So you can see there's eight, eight hotels in particular. Perfect. So let's start off with uh, the cultural aspects of Sri Lanka. So um, everybody knows that Sigiriya, Polonnaruwa, and Radhapura, Dambulla, those are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And then how we try to differentiate uh, the cultural experience when it comes to Sri Lanka is through connecting your clients with uh, the local experts that we have in the area. So say for an example, we have uh, cycling tours, which have variations as well. So what we try to do to our clients uh, in the itineraries is not try to temper them out. So I mean, like we are very passionate about the history of Sri Lanka and you know, like we love the mega temples that we have. So what we've understood is like uh, when you uh, see one temple, then of course, if you start uh, going through a second temple, a third temple, then you know, like people start to get you know, like uh, a little bored. So, but there are people who are really interested in the culture and history of Sri Lanka. So therefore we do have uh, two experiences uh, uh, for both these types of clients. So say for an example, the Backroads Cultural Cycling Journey is all about uh, you know, like deep diving into history and then it is hosted by a historian and then the village lifestyle uh, experience takes you through like paddy fields, through villagers. And another thing that we try to incorporate into these experiences is a sustainable aspect. So, I mean, like just for small amounts, like $25, $30, while your guests are cycling through these areas, they'll be stopping at a local home and then donating dry rations, which should be an amazing help to these local communities. And we try to uh, get the clients involved in community development as well. And then we do have uh, different experiences. So like I said, we do have different hosts who will be coming into the itinerary. So uh, one such host is a hermit monk, actually. So uh, he is actually an amazing personality and he is very open minded as well. So I mean, like the lifestyle of a Buddhist monk is totally different. And then the lifestyle of a hermit monk is even different. 
So this is what we try to understand. So it's a lifestyle journey. We are not trying to teach your clients with like Buddhism and what it is kind of thing. So we are trying to understand the lifestyle. So I mean, like through this journey, your clients would see monks meditating in caves and then uh, talking about topics that they want, like it could be like stress in work, stress in life, and then uh, small meditation techniques that they can use. And also, you know, like we do have uh, uh, popular destinations like Sigilia, but we try to do it in a little bit of a different way where we uh, go to the rock, which is next to Sigilia, which is Pidurangala. And then uh, we try to do a sunrise breakfast overlooking the Sigilia Rock Fortress. And of course, if the clients want, uh, they can uh, climb Sigilia afterwards as well. Then, of course, the usual suspects are there with regard to the other cultural sites uh, like the Polonarua. Ritigala Monastery is another interesting one where it is a hike, but it is a very spiritual journey, which is done by a yoga guru that we have in the area. Yapaho Rock Fortress could be an alternative to Sigiriya, but uh, I would explain uh, more about Yapaho because, as you know, in Sigiriya, the pleasure gardens are there, the uh, ruins are there at the top, then the frescoes are there. There's a lot that you can see. But if you are looking for a rock fortress, which is like quiet and calm, then of course, Yapaho would be the ideal place to be. Then of course, Aukana and Saserua Buddha statues are there as well. So if somebody is interested in like architecture, then these two are like amazing places to be. And then uh, talking about candy. So why we are talking about these uh, destinations as a whole is because uh, the sites of Anuradhapura, Polonnaruwa, and then candy creates the cultural triangle, the three ancient cities of Sri Lanka, hence the name, the cultural triangle. So in Kandy, what we try to focus is uh, not about temples because we've been talking about temples throughout the itinerary when the clients are staying over in Sigiri area. So here, what we try to do is like talk about the myths and legends of Kandy, a little bit of hiking. And then we do have like bar hopping experiences. Then we bring in the local hosts for these walks as well. So yeah, there's a lot that you can do in Kandy. So, thank you, Sanka. So, one of the hotels that you can stay at if you want to explore some of these amazing excursions that Sanka has mentioned in the Cultural Triangle is Water Garden Sigaria. So, Water Garden Sigaria is uh, owned by a Sri Lankan family. They own a couple of hotels in Sri Lanka, but I would say this is their possibly their flagship property. It's absolutely beautiful. And one of those amazing things about it is everything is kind of oriented. So, you're facing, your clients are facing Sigaria. So, you can see that the where the path follows and you get to the end, that's the reception area. So when your clients arrive at the reception area and they get out the car and they walk up a few steps, they can see Sigaria right in front of them. So the view is absolutely extraordinary. So this has got 30 suites, this hotel, and 17 of the suites have got private plunge pools. And here in this picture, you will see what the suites look like. So they really are proper suites in that every single bedroom here has a totally separate sitting area, which is what you can see on the bottom left-hand side. Uh, there's also four duplexes where families can uh, stay, which has a double bedroom upstairs and a twin bedroom downstairs. So it really is an absolutely top-notch hotel. Uh, the other thing to mention about this property is they also offer a program of amazing excursions. And again, you can book these through Sanka and Hummingbird Travel. So obviously Sanka and Hummingbird have their own excursions and the hotel has some different ones, but all of them you can book through Hummingbird Travel. Thanks, Sanka. So the next hotel that your clients might like to stay at in this area is the Candy House. So the Candy House is located about half an hour north of Candy. Uh, and so it's really perfectly placed because Candy itself is a really busy, buzzing city. And sometimes when you look at the pictures of the Candy Lake and the Temple of the Took, it can be a little bit misleading because it can kind of like, oh, that looks like a really calm, peaceful place. But the reality is it's a healing city. So sometimes staying outside the city is really fantastic because it means that your clients get away from the, the really crowded, noisy city. And the Candy House is just located on the edge of a village and it's extremely peaceful. 
It's an old aristocrat's house. It has nine bedrooms and there are two different categories of bedroom. You have the deluxe rooms, which are the sort of lower category room, and you have the ultra category, which is the higher category. And what differentiates the rooms is that the ultra category, and you can see that in these pictures here, all have outside uh, seating space. So that's really, really nice. Um, thing to note about this hotel is it doesn't take children under 12 as well. So obviously great for teenagers and older children, but no younger children in the hotel. And it's very much decorated in a kind of lovely colonial style with some antiques and really rich fabrics. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful hotel. And it's, again, very, very peaceful setting with a lovely swimming pool and it has bikes that clients can use and et cetera. So it, 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 it's, it's really a superb property. So um, the next hotel I think we're leading on to is, yeah, I'm pretty sure we are, is Santani Wellness. Uh, so Santani is Sri Lanka's top wellness retreat. And it's actually located about an hour north of Kandy and a couple of hours south of some of the key sites that Sanka just mentioned, like Polonawara and Sigawe. It's a few hours south of that and an hour north of Kandy. Um, what's really interesting about Santani Wellness, I think, and I know this is one of Sanka's favorite hotels in Sri Lanka, and I bumped into him here before, is that about 60% of people who stay at Santani Wellness are not like full on wellness clients. They're what I would kind of call the normal clients who just fancy a few days staying in the most incredible hotel and enjoying the free yoga classes and enjoying some treatments. So yes, you do get people who stay here and do you know full on wellness and they go on special programs. They might stay for a week, two weeks, three weeks, but you also get a lot of more normal clients as well. So it really can suit everybody. Again, it doesn't take children under 12 at Santani, which means it's generally a really very, very peaceful place. This is the extraordinary dining room. And I know at Santani Wellness, we should probably focus on all the amazing treatments that clients can have, but I have to tell you, the food is unbelievably good. I'm talking like world-class fine dining at Santani. It's absolutely exceptional. I think you probably agree with that, Sanka, wouldn't you? Exactly. I mean, like, one of the good things that the executive chef does here is, like, he brings, he brings in the local touch to it. So, I mean, like, everything is curated when the uh, clients are arriving, uh, the chef, and then uh, the Ayurvedic doctor, if it is a wellness client, they all meet the clients, and then it is highly personalized. They don't have any menus. Everything is curated according to what the clients need, actually. Yeah, and they do this incredible seven-course tasting menu as well, which just kind of blows your mind. But yeah, Santani is a great base, not only from which to have um, all these treatments and everything, but also it's a great base to explore the Knuckle Mountain Range, which um, uh, was on um, Sanka's presentation as well. Um, yeah, so moving on, the next one is Glen Ross Living. Now, Glen Ross Living, you can see from the little dot on the stylized map here, is in a slightly, I would say, slightly unusual location. It's not on the kind of more normal tourist route, but it should be. And Glen Ross Living kind of follows on nicely from Santani because it also has an emphasis on wellness. Um, what I haven't got here is a picture of the original manor house. So originally, this was has a, a, a manor house which was built by the plant, the rubber planters who lived here a couple of hundred years ago. And then this is owned now by the same family that have water garden cigarette. And just a couple of years ago, they built these seven amazing pool villas, one of which you can see in front of you here. So you have seven ultra modern pool villas, which are very, very high end luxury. And you have the manor house and the manor house has three bedrooms as well. So altogether, there are 10 bedrooms. There's a total separate spa area and a yoga shala, etc. So it's a really beautiful hotel. And it's worth noting that this is Glen Ross Living is on a working rubber estate tea estate and cinnamon estate so there's quite a lot of interesting things for your clients to explore on the estate as well as participating in wellness and it's about an hour's drive south of colombo and about half an hour in from the coast so sometimes it can work really well if you've got clients like staying in the Maldives, but they want to kind of just have a few days in sri lanka or clients who don't necessarily have the time to go right into the more traditional uh, hill country of Sri Lanka, but they can just have a taste of the hills from, from this amazing uh, hotel here. And this is one of the modern suites that they built. So each suite has got a, a private plunge pool, a living room upstairs and a bedroom downstairs. So they are huge and they are very, very high spec. Perfect. Uh, so let's move on to the wildlife aspect of uh, Sri Lanka. So today what we're going to be focusing on is like, uh, so 
there were many uh, wildlife uh, celebrities who came down to Sri Lanka, and then they they have said that outside of Sri outside of Africa, Sri Lanka is one of the best destinations for wildlife because of its size, because we have so many national parks uh, scattered around the island. And then because of that, uh, the uh, popularity caught on. And unfortunately, there are some national parks which are like very crowded. So today, we are going to be focusing on uh, uh, one national park. And also, we'll be talking about uh, uh, some of the wildlife that you can see in Sri Lanka as well. So um, something that a lot of people are asking about, when does it rain? So, I mean, like rain is something that is affecting uh, the safaris, but not in a negative way. So, uh, Galway National Park, as you can see, I'm not going to read out the entire thing so you all can see which uh, months uh, you get rain. So, we are talking of like maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes rain during these months. So, as you can see, during the months from, uh, say, October to January, it is raining a little bit. However, during uh, from the months of like, so, say, February all the way to October, wildlife is amazing. No rain at all. And then, of course, uh, the uh, weather patterns are changing a little bit. I mean, like just before this call, I just had a call with uh, all the GMs of all these pro uh, from these properties in these areas. And then they said, you know, like normally, you know, like uh, they are having droughts in uh, Vilpatu these days in uh, previous years. But now it's raining. So the weather patterns are changing a little bit. So this is just to give you an idea about uh, the uh, rain uh, that we've had uh, during the last years. So yes, the usual suspect, as everybody knows, we do have the leopards, bears, and elephants in Sri Lanka. So there are only three national parks in Sri Lanka where you can see leopards, uh, um, Wilpatu, uh, Kumana, and Yala. Of course, there are leopards uh, in most of the areas in Sri Lanka, but these are the only three places that we would uh, recommend because of the sightings. And then the sloth bears are in these three parks as well. And then the elephants. So the majestic Sri Lankan elephants are like everywhere. I mean, like sometimes you do get traffic jams in rural areas of Sri Lanka on the road because there are elephants on the road. So the vehicles are you know, like waiting until the elephants cross the road. It is an amazing uh, experience uh, that you have. So apart from uh, the big game, we do have the birds. So I mean, like there are 34 endemic uh, bird species in Sri Lanka, which you can't find anywhere else. So I know in the UK, you have the bird fair, which is a huge interest uh, for the uh, uh, Brits, where birding is like amazing down here in Sri Lanka, where you can go to places like uh, Kumana, Bundala, uh, then Singaraja, Kanelia. So I mean, like if you want to know more details about birding, let me know. We do have tours specific for niche markets like bird tours, uh, butterfly tours, dragonflies, dra damselflies. So if you want to go you know, like niche, then of course uh, we can do that as well. Then we do have the primates. So you know, like there are different types of monkeys and then the loris are there. So we do have like the gray slender loris and then uh, we do have the red ones as well. And then, of course, I talked about the monkeys. So uh, the main areas that you can see the monkeys would be like in Polonnaruwa, in Dambulla, and then in uh, Horton Plains. So going into the ocean, Sri Lanka being an island, uh, there are whales and dolphins who keep migrating from uh, to um, like from the uh, African area all the way to Sri Lanka, and then they go towards Singapore. So I mean, this is like a migratory pattern. So that's why we do have seasons for whale washing. So uh, these whales keep on migrating from place to place. So from November to April, it is the uh, west, uh, southern coast of Sri Lanka, which is Mirissa. And again, from November to April, it is Mirissa, south coast, like one hour away from Gaul. And then from May to October, it is Trincomalee on the eastern side of uh, the country. So there is Kalpitiya as well. I mean, like there are whales in Kalpitiya, but uh, we do not promote that because the boats that we have in Kalpitiya are not big enough to go deep into the ocean. So they only have like small fishing boats. So in Kalpitiya, we only do dolphin washing. So uh, the main whales uh, that we are you know, like uh, promoting would be like the blue whale and the sperm whale. And uh, talking about a unique selling point when it comes to the wildlife uh, of Sri Lanka, so the biggest land animal to uh, currently inhabit Earth is uh, the elephant. So we got that uh, ticked off in Sri Lanka. The biggest uh, animal 
ever to inhabit Earth, land or ocean, uh, is blue whale. So bigger than the dinosaurs, bigger than anything this world had ever seen, you can see in uh, Sri Lanka as well. So that is like a little bit of a unique selling point we use. And then we do have turtles. So there are seven sea turtle species in the entire world. And then out of the seven, uh, five of them come to Sri Lanka for nesting. So uh, what happens is like, it's a beautiful uh, like story. So wherever these turtles are born, they would definitely come to that exact same beach by you know, like memory to lay their first uh, set of eggs. So I mean, like that has been scientifically proven. Don't ask me why, you know, like I'm not uh, sure how that happens, but still they come. So that is why these turtles keep on coming back to Sri Lanka all the time. And um, as Sanka mentioned, there are the more uh, unusual or less visited um, parks and Galaya Lodge is one of them. So you can see where the dot is on the stylized map. So that is the location of Galoya National Park. And one of the joys of Galoya National Park is the fact it is not crowded. As Sanka mentioned, there are parks, there is one park in particular in Sri Lanka, which can have a real crowding issue sometimes. Um, Galoya is not like that at all. And very often, I've been there quite a few times, it's really unlikely you will see other tourists. Um, Galoya Lodge is a really, really special place. And I would say that it's a year-round destination, as Sanka mentioned. And actually, interestingly enough, the rates for Galoya Lodge are constant throughout the year because the lodge owners and managers don't see that there's a particular time of year that's better to visit it or not. So I would say that it's a very comfortable property. It's not five star. It's just extremely, extremely comfortable. And at Galoya, it's all about the experiences and what you do there. And it's not really about ticking off the game. So they make a real point of saying, you know, you're not going to come to Galoya and tick off leopard, tick off this. They say, no, you're unlikely to see a leopard here. There are leopards, but they're very well hidden in Galoya. But one of the excursions they do that is fantastic is going on a boat safari. So you'll see this bottom left picture here and people go on a boat safari at Galoya and hope to see elephants swimming in the reservoir. A really special and unusual thing to see. So you'd be really lucky if your clients saw that. The other excursion that you can do at Galoya is to go and visit the Veda uh, indigenous uh, tribes people. So they still live in the area and you can go with somebody from the property and visit them and find out how they still maintain certain traditions and live in a certain traditional way in the area around Galoya. And then it's very likely as well that your clients will go on private game drives. They always just take clients on their own. They don't group different clients together. You can go and have picnics at the river. Another wonderful excursion for the more active people is to climb Monkey Mountain, which is near the lodge as well, which is a really challenging walk uphill about an hour and a half straight uphill, but the most incredible views when you get to the top. So yeah, at Goloya, it's about being in nature, being outdoors, and really being in the most magical environment without many other people. Exactly. And also, you know, like the jungle cooking experience that they have is amazing because I've, uh, you know, like taken so many agents there and then they are like blown away because a Vedda, uh, uh, a, from, a person from the Vedda community comes and then he welcomes everyone. And then we are cooking actually the Vedda tribe's food. So, I mean, like, I first uh, tasted them, like, several years ago, and then I was blown away. It is nothing fancy. The presentation is nothing fancy. It's just, like, the interaction with the Vedas, you know, like, you get to cook the meal, and then hot off the pot, you get to, you know, like, eat the meal in an amazing setting. I mean, like, Kajan roofs, and then on top of a rock, and then overlooking uh, the mountain area. So, it is an amazing experience. Okay, so now we are moving on to the inland boutiques. So uh, as you know, Sri Lanka is very famous for family and honeymoon uh, uh, couples as well. So uh, Sri Lanka has so many experiences when it comes to the kids. So let me know if you want. We have a separate brochure just for kids. I mean, like uh, stargazing, you know, like walking with a horse and then uh, plastic in our life. So these are like very fun activities that your uh, uh, clients can, uh, clients, kids can get involved and also, you know, like get to know about, you know, like uh, the bad side of, uh, you know, like plastic and then how we need to coexist with other animals in the world and then getting your hand, uh, hands dirty and learning about Mother Earth. So there are so many uh, different experiences that we have just for kids. Let me know if you want more details.
So, yeah, moving on to, to kind of inland hotels and families. So Kahanda Kanda is a stunning inland hotel. Um, you'll see from the little dot that on the stylized map here that it's just inland and it's about 10 minutes from the sea. But as you'll see from the next hotel that we look at an image of, it also has a sister hotel just 10 minutes away. So whilst this one that you can see here in this image is 10 minutes from the sea, you get a free tuk-tuk shuttle to the one that's on the beach. And so that one on the beach almost acts like a private beach club to this property called Kahanda Kanda here. This property itself does not take children under 12. So it's really perfect for like honeymooners and for, you know, like if you've got, young, you know, young couples, et cetera, et cetera, it's beautiful. Uh, the Kahanda Kanda collection, the KK collection is three properties and they're all owned and managed by an English guy called George Cooper, who's an interior designer. So they are fabulously decorated. They're really very, very beautiful. And this one, Kahanda Kanda, is on a 12 acre lowland tea plantation. And there are 12 suites and eight of the 12 suites have private plunge pools, such as this one that you can see here. So really, if you've got clients looking for an amazing place for honeymoon, great privacy and real luxury, Kahanda Kanda is a really excellent choice and then i think if we go into the next slide that shows you oh this is why house i think we'll come to kk beach next but so why house is the perfect hotel for families so as sanka mentioned sri lanka is brilliant for children and i say that having moved to sri lanka with a two-year-old so i really have been to sri lanka many 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 times with a, ch a child of all ages and it is a fantastic place for families and children uh, my daughter loves Sri Lanka. Uh, she's 13 and she's coming back again this year. She went last year. And her favourite hotel in Sri Lanka is Y House. So Y House is literally, if you don't want a hotel with kids clubs, because Y House is a small boutique hotel with 10 rooms. So there are hotels with like kids clubs and stuff. But if you just want a really beautiful boutique hotel, Y House is the best one I've come across for families. And this is one of the rooms that works really well. So this is actually downstairs, you've got this double bed that you can see on the left hand side and then you have a mezzanine level room with twin beds so this is one room that you're paying for here and yet you have a family of four that can stay in one room but a lot of the other rooms at Y House so it's 10 rooms in total are really perfect as well for families and they can one big suite can have two beds that fits a kid again so they've got quite a lot of rooms that are really perfect for families and the other thing to mention about Y House so it's three minutes from one of the most beautiful beaches in Sri Lanka called Wijaya or Dawella Beach. It has two different names. And at this beach, you literally do see giant turtles just swimming in the water. I mean, it's it's really, really stunning. So this hotel is not on the beach, but three minutes from the beach. And this one overlooks paddy fields. And I think, what's the next image, Sanka? Is it... Um... Oh, right. OK, it's no, no, not that. I thought we had one of, of, of that beach. But anyway, so Y House, perfect for families. It's about 15 minutes from Gaul itself. Really, really near a beautiful beach and ideal for families. And then if we go on to the next hotel, the Sun House. So the Sun House is actually located in Gaul itself. It's not located in Gaul Fort. It's actually just outside Gaul Fort. And, and there are some advantages to that. I mean, it's very easy to get into the fort from here. I mean, you can just hop in a tuk-tuk and you'll be in the fort in a few minutes, or you can walk and you'll be in the fort in 10 minutes. But one of the advantages, you know, there are many advantages to staying within the fort, but for one of the advantages to staying outside the fort is it's a little bit cooler. You might have a little bit more of a breeze and also you've got more space. So this property, the Sun House, you can't see here, but there's a pool here. There's a really, really beautiful pool. And you've got seven bedrooms in this, as you saw before, just a really old, very characterful property. So you've got seven different bedrooms. It's got incredible lead in prices. So the rack rate, so Sanka's company, uh, Hummingbird, get a better rate than this. The lead in rack rate is $150 for this room here. I mean, that's really amazing value when you think of what a beautiful boutique hotel it is. So yeah, just outside for the Sun House, really stunning. And it's actually managed by the same people that manage Galoya Lodge as well. So that there's a link there too. Okay, so moving on to the beach properties that we have. So uh, before I go into the beach properties, I would like to say the beach holidays are predominantly about, uh, you would have heard about the monsoons. So uh, I would like to clear out something. Yes, from November to April, it is the best time to be on the western and southern coast. And then, yes, it is uh, best to be on the East Coast from October, uh, May to October. 
but uh, something uh, i mean like, it's a very you know like i would say 25 year, uh, 25 years back somebody said that and everybody picked it up kind of thing so there are months that it rains uh, you know like on the western and southern coast as well but i would say about good 9 to 10 months you can still use the western and southern part of sri lanka but the amazing part is during the months of may to october the rates go down uh, on the western and southern coast property so for a five star boutique property you will be paying like four star rates so if you have any clients who are like interested in having an amazing uh, beach holiday but still don't mind a little bit of like 10 15 minute rain then of course uh, uh, this could work during the off season as well so the last house is a fantastic beach property. It's right at the southern end of Sri Lanka, very near Tangool. And it's actually 10 minutes from the Anantara and 10 minutes from the Amanwella, one of the Aman hotels. But it's the total opposite of those. This is a really beautiful five bedroom, small boutique hotel. And it's it's pretty famous in Sri Lanka because it was designed by Jeffrey Bauer, Sri Lanka's most famous architect. And it's called The Last House because it was the last private commission before Jeffrey Bauer died. But it's also the last house on the beach. So it is a beautiful, beautiful stretch of beach. It's, it, it's probably one, one of the best beaches in the south of Sri Lanka. And it actually, because you're sort of edging slightly more over to the east of the island, Interestingly, you can swim here more than you might be able to in some other southern properties. And I was here in October last year, and I tell you, it was absolutely perfect weather. It really was like this. So you can see, like, the, the sea was really quite calm and the weather was amazing. And that was in October, which a lot of people think, oh, October is not necessarily the best time to visit Sri Lanka. But we were in the hills before and it was raining and then we came down south in October, beautiful weather. So this is the last house that you can see just at the foreground here. So it literally just has this beautiful lawn and then a gate onto this perfect, perfect beach. And it's a huge beach as well. You can do bodyboarding here and nearby there's another great beach called Hirakechia, which is great for kind of beginner surfers. And actually you can't see it from this image, but there are a few little restaurants and cafes along this beach as well. So whilst it looks like there's not much else it's actually perfect because you can wander along from the last house maybe have lunch or dinner in another property but it's just all below the tree line very very beautiful place to stay uh, the next property is kk beach so you may remember i talked about kahanda kanda which was the one up on the hill so this is the one that's 10 minutes away and is on the coast um again this is on a really lovely beach called habradura beach as well and this one is a lower price level than its sister hotel, Kahanda Kanda. So again, you're looking at kind of maybe the lead in price from around a couple of hundred dollars a night. That's the, the, the rack rate. So and sometimes Sanka will be, get a better rate than that certain times of year. Um, and then obviously you've got a few different categories here. So when you're getting to the higher category rooms, which are on the higher floor, they're enormous penthouses, they're huge. So you can in one of these penthouses fit a family of four. And this hotel, unlike its sister property, does take children of all ages so you can easily go here with with babies young children and they're right on the beach so this is your view here and if you're staying at the sister property you can come down here use it as a beach club have your lunch here and then it will go on your bill up at kahanda kanda but this is a, a great hotel in its own right and it's just in a really good location it's about 25 minutes along the southern coast from gaul itself so a really lovely property kk beach and another one for the same group is uh, the Villa Bentota. So as I mentioned, this is um, this little group of three hotels is uh, owned and managed by George Cooper, an English guy. And a few years ago, he took over the management of this property called the Villa Bentota. Uh, another hotel in Sri Lanka that is, is well known because, again, it was designed by Jeffrey Bauer. So Jeffrey Bauer designed this as a hotel and it's, um, it's absolutely beautiful. So you've got various different blocks of accommodation that make up this hotel. And in total, there are kind of 14 bedrooms. This hotel takes uh, children of any ages as well. Um, and one thing that's particularly unusual and really charming about this property is that it has a train line running through the garden. And I know that you might think, well, 
isn't that kind of a little bit off-putting but actually it's really charming and I, George who, who runs this hotel says he's only ever had one guest who has checked out because of that most people love it and he's actually had train enthusiasts specifically come and stay at the property because of the train and it, honestly Sanko and I actually were here together last year and it's it's just super good fun and you have to walk over the train line to get to the beach and um, obviously children think it's the best thing ever because everyone's waving and uh, all the people going by on the train and uh, all the room beautifully designed again lots of different categories of room some of them really good for families as well so a, a really lovely property and remember Ben Tote is a little bit more busy in terms of tourism so one of the benefits of that is that you have got water sports in Ben Tote. so if you've got families who want to do a bit of the more kind of you know cheesy water sports stuff actually Ben Tote is, is a good place to do that but you know it's not spoiled as well and this property the Villa Ben Tote is in, in a quiet area of Ben Tote as well the beach is just beautiful and this is uh, the picture of the great train line. So you can see it running along there across the end of the property. And then you walk over the train line and you get onto the beautiful, beautiful beach. So yeah, it's a cracking property. Very, very good for families too. Perfect. So uh, the last bit. So let me quickly take you through uh, how Hummingbird operates uh, on the ground. So we do allocate account managers and then uh, the team is being divided into different parts of the world. So Noni is handling uh, UK and then Madri is handling uh, uh, the America. So likewise, uh, we would be allocating uh, account managers to you if you haven't worked with us before. And then the working hours are like very flexible. So from 9 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., uh, somebody will be there in Colombo office. So I do the graveyard shift. I come to office like one o'clock in the afternoon and work until like 10, 1030 in the evening. So uh, I can pick up any emails that you can, uh, that you send out. Uh, so uh, until like 5 p.m. Uh, uh, your time, there'll be somebody working in uh, Sri Lanka. So a uh, little bit about our fleet. So we do have different vehicle categories. The highest one would be the Range Rovers, Discovery Force. Land Cruisers, uh, Monteros and Prados would be in the premium category. So all the vehicles can be white labeled. So nothing about Hummingbird uh, will be mentioned. So if you want, uh, we can use your logos as uh, the dashboard signs, then uh, the magnetic stickers, uh, everything uh, can be customized. So for the families, we do have uh, the luxury uh, Mercedes-Benz Vito vans and then uh, the standard KDH high roof vans as well. We do Vetu itineraries. Uh, so those who are using Vetu know that uh, this is an amazingly interactive itinerary where you can uh, go and uh, look at the pictures of the places you're going, look at the rooms, and then uh, go through details of uh, the map. I mean, you can zoom in, see what, which route you're taking, and then uh, this can be white labeled as well. So which means we take away your entire time of making itineraries for Sri Lanka. So we would have your company logo, your contact details here so you can send this link uh, to your clients so that you can uh, save a ton of time. And then guide training is uh, very important to us because we understand that no matter what you and I do uh, sitting in offices, these are the guys who are like making or breaking to us. So we pay uh, an extra amount of uh, time and money and then making sure that these guides are like well taken care of. And then every three or four months, we are doing a guide training program. So in another couple of weeks time, we are having the next one. So we're not trying to teach them what Sri Lanka is all about. We are trying to teach them the ever-changing uh, world and the ever-changing needs. And then when we have like new two operators working with us, then we talk about your requirements and then uh, your special clients. So we do not use any single use plastic. All the water bottles that we send on tour would be like glass. We give you the option of uh, still or sparkling. And then uh, onto your right hand side, you can see uh, the welcome pack. It's not just about an itinerary and a guest coming sheet. So uh, as you may know, you know, like when you're going, when your clients are going into temples, they need to cover their shoulders and their knees. We tell our clients, don't worry about any of that just wear whatever is comfortable to you. Just before you walk into the temple, just take this out, throw it around your shoulder or wrap it around your waist so that you're covered. And also, uh, as a show of respect, you need to remove your footwear. And then during the day, it could be like very hot in certain areas of the country. So you know, like we have disposable socks uh, that you can use. And then hand sanitizers, insect repellents, uh, a huge blowout map is there. I mean, like still people like those maps to see where we are going, that kind of thing. And then uh, 
uh, postcards are there. So I mean, like, let me know if you need a list of everything that is included. And then we do provide on to updates for our guests as well. So as soon as the clients arrive, we talk to them and then uh, we do that three times during the tour, first at the beginning and at the end and then halfway through as well. Some of the alternatives that we do uh, to you know, like uh, uh, be the crowds, uh, we talked about Yapahua, Mulkilga Cave Temple, which is closer to Last House in Tangol, Kumara National Park, which is on the other side uh, on the East Coast. Then we have uh, Mice and Cruise Division as well. Totally different subject. If you're interested, let me know. Then we have Private Jet Journeys, uh, which is uh, being handled by the same team as well. So we take care of the private jet in terms of cleaning, uh, refueling, and then uh, taking care of the crew because the rules are a little bit different for the crews. So we can sort out all of that. And we do weddings as well, not very large ones, but small intimate weddings uh, we do arrange. I mean, like uh, Sri Lanka collection properties are ideal for buyouts because the rooms, are, the number of rooms are like limited and then they go, I mean, like the sales directors that we have, the owners are like amazing event coordinators and then they can go nuts depending on how, what kind of a budget you have. We are like, uh, I'm like the only limitation would be the budget. So any weddings that you want to have in Sri Lanka, we can organize that. A little bit about uh, what we don't do in Sri Lanka. So there are so many activities related to wildlife that we are not being part of. So elephant back rides, bullock cart rides, swimming in the whales, night bird watching. So if you want to know why we are not promoting this, let me know. I'll be happy to explain further because we don't want to be that kind of a company where we are trying to make a buck, uh, trying to hurt animals and making sure that they are not taken care of. The final slide for the day are the philanthropic aspects that we do. So uh, SOS Children's Village is an orphanage that we uh, uh, work with in Sri Lanka. So every booking that you give us, uh, we keep a part of the profits uh, to sponsor orphan kids. So the accommodation, the meals, their lodging, everything we sponsor. And uh, we do that every year so that we make sure that a kid maybe like who is like three or four years is being taken care of until the day he leaves the orphanage kind of thing. And then uh, we do have so many social, uh, uh, social development uh, projects like women empowerment and then human elephant conflict uh, solutions, then human leopard conflict solutions, uh, saving a, a, a rainforest. So there are so many uh, projects that we have in our portfolio that we like to get our clients involved as well. So talk to me if you are interested in this. So I'll just uh, finally talk about one such project that we do on the East Coast. So unfortunately, certain communities are still there where they believe that the women should stay at home, take care of the kids, take care of the houses, that kind of thing. So what we try to do with uh, some foundations in the area are like these uh, ladies, they like to make an, a living, but still you know, like time has moved on. They don't know anything. So through these foundations, we are sponsoring like education programs, something simple like sewing classes and then uh, donating a sewing machine to the foundation so that uh, they can uh, be a little bit independent and make a living. So yeah, talk to me if there's anything else that you would want. So yeah, that's about everything. Liv? Thank you both so much for that. Um, it's great to go through all the different properties. Um, obviously, my favorite is Galoya Lodge because I worked there in 2017 yeah. and oh, won't wow. stop talking about it. Um, <laughs> but it is, um, as you say, so unique and just so amazing and um, a bit off the beaten track, which I think is um, really cool in Sri Lanka when you kind of go and don't see anyone and get to have a feel of like sort of local rural life. Um, so we do have a couple questions. Um, the first one is, could you please go over the three national parks that are the best to go at? Sorry, what were the three national parks to view leopards? Um, I think they missed that being mentioned. If okay. you that quickly again. So um, the three national parks would be Yala National Park, which is on the south coast, uh, Bilpatu National Park, which is on the northeastern side of the country, and then Kumara National Park, again, on the eastern side, but to, uh, towards Yala. So if you ask me which is the best uh, national park out of these three, I would say go for uh, Vilpattu or else go for Kumana. Uh, you can do Vilpattu while staying over at, uh, 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 sorry, I'm just saying. 
So water garden secretaria. So you know, like uh, what I would recommend is like if you are doing uh, Vilpattu while staying over at water garden secretaria, don't put any other activities on that day. So, uh, but it is an amazing park. So apart from the leopards, we do have bears and elephants as well. Vilpattu is the biggest national park. Kumana is the quietest out of it. And then Kumana National Park is like uh, not crowded. And then Yala, of course, is famous because the leopards and bears, they really don't care whether they are there or not. So they would be like just sitting there. But the downside is like one leopard and there are like 25 jeeps around that leopard. So the type of clients that you would have who've been to Masai Mara and Serengeti would not uh, you know, like appreciate a safari experience like that. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, we have another question from someone um, who's asked, do you need any medical certificate for immunity against monkeypox at the moment? No, uh, not at the moment. So we still haven't found any monkeypox. Uh, fingers crossed, I'm not gonna jinx it. So we haven't found any uh, cases like that in Sri Lanka. And talking about a little bit about Sri Lanka. So today uh, you will get this news, uh, you know, like in the coming day. So today, uh, the tourism minister just announced that uh, for 35 countries, including the UK, they're going to go for visa-free visa uh, access into Sri Lanka from 1st of October. So that is like a big uh, uh, a win for us because, as you might have known, the visa process had been a little bit complicated during the last uh, few weeks where you know, like the online uh, website had been down and then the only option was the clients had to come to Sri Lanka and then uh, wait in line to apply for visa. So if you have any clients coming after 1st of October, good news for them. We will uh, get in touch with you with an official uh, uh, email with all the details of all the 35 countries as well. Yeah, such exciting news that. Massive, um, yeah, massive improvement, I think, to try and get people over much more easily. Um, and we've got another couple of questions. So um, is Sri Lanka an easy place to travel with small children and a baby? Which areas are best for families? I will let Elna answer that. I don't <laughs> have kids. <laughs> yeah, like you heard me say earlier, I moved to Sri Lanka with a two-year-old. So uh, I would say um, with a baby, the only thing I would say is maybe long journeys not so good. So maybe I would say if you had a baby, I would... I personally would probably focus my trip more in the south and maybe where you've got, you could just, there's lots of amazing places to visit on the southern area of Sri Lanka and maybe just going to the hill country in Ella. So not doing massive long journeys. But I would say that once your child gets to, I don't know, like four, five, six, you can start traveling everywhere. I mean, honestly, I was up in the cultural triangle with a three-year-old. And actually the first time my daughter climbed Sigaria was when she was six years old. And yeah, fantastic. It's good. I and I would say the main thing about traveling with babies and young children in Sri Lanka is Sri Lankan people love babies and small children. So your child gets spoiled rotten everywhere because the people love it to the point that my daughter used to get annoyed because everybody was coming up to her going, oh, <laughs> but honestly, it's, it's a great place to travel, travel kids. The only thing I would say is if the children are very small, I would just restrict the traveling time and wouldn't do these such long journeys. But as soon as your child gets to like five, six, you can pretty much go anywhere. Train journeys are great fun. You know, car journeys at that age, you can give them an iPad and they can, you know, watch something while you're traveling around. So it is a very family friendly place to travel i'm sure sank would agree and there's some hotels that are just a brilliant like white house for for families and small children so i i actually think it's it really is up there in terms of countries to travel to with children you don't really need to worry about anything like your kids getting ill i mean honestly i can't think of my daughter really hardly has ever been ill in Sri Lanka you can you know you can eat lettuce you know all the things that people say to you or you know careful if you go to India because you might get this and that honestly in Sri Lanka you don't have many worries it's malaria free there's just it's a pretty good country to travel to with kids generally I would say yeah Exactly. And also in uh, Water Garden, Sigiria, and also in Galoya, they have the two bedroom units for the families as well. So the properties are like really geared to cater to uh, the, pro uh, the family market. And also most of the property, uh, properties, they do have like kids menus as well. Yeah. So they don't have to you know, like uh, go for the main menus. So, yeah. 
Yeah, to totally agree. And even things like when you're driving along in Sri Lanka, you know, normally the guides and the driver guides are so brilliant that they would just like stop at something interesting and get a, a Tambili, a coconut drink for the kids and stuff like that. There's just so many different ways in which I'd say it's such a good country to travel to with kids. And then I would all, personally, I would always say, you know, finish on the, the southwest coast where there's just amazing wealth of excursions which are family friendly like biking through the paddy fields where they had kids bikes and stuff like that there's just it's just such a brilliant brilliant place for children amazing well thank you both so much i think that's all we have for the questions um today but if anyone does think of anything afterwards please do reach out to either myself or sanka or eleanor um and we can all come back to you on those um but yeah big thank you to both of you again for joining us today and um for going through such an amazing presentation um, and all sharing the great news about the visas. So we'll make sure we do send an update to everyone with all the relevant information on that as well. So yeah, a big thank you again to everyone for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Anchor. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.